You're up early today. Yep. It's time for the election again. All the co-workers are meeting for it today. I want to get there early. Time flies, doesn't it? You've been a church leader for a whole year. Yeah, you're right. You know, this past year, I haven't done much practical work. I realize now that you can't resolve problems without the reality of truth. I'm not so sure whether I'll get reelected. You worked really hard this year, and you've accomplished some things in your duty. You don't need to worry about it. Guess we'll find out. No matter what happens, I'll pursue the truth and do my duty. Mom. Tell Grandpa it's breakfast time. Mm-hmm. Grandpa, breakfast! Shashwe, I'll need your help at the shop today. Hey, where are you going? You from around here? I live just east of the city. What's your business here? Uh, I'm just going to my uncle's house up ahead. Yes, we have watches set up at every alley. Huh? I'll call you back. Hey! Mrs. Wu, how's your back today? Oh, better. Director Ma. Hello, Mrs. Wu. Who is this? She's new here. This is Miss Zhao. My back's been acting up again. She's my acupuncturist. Yep. Hmm. Huh. Acupuncture? That's right. I'm an acupuncturist. It can treat many conditions. Like stiff neck, back pain, or the after effects of strokes. Yes, she's very good. Hey, since you two seem to know each other, I make house calls if you're interested. My rates are low and I can uh, guarantee- No, no. I'm in perfect health. Right then, carry on. Hello? Yes, I'll be there soon. Time flies, huh? Can't believe it's election Here, time again. I'll be out watching. Great. It's time for our election. Picking the right church leaders is of the utmost importance. Right. Right. Someone who loves the truth and has good humanity can guide us in entering the reality of the truth. Picking someone who lacks the truth would harm us irreparably. Yes. We must fellowship on the election principles first, so everyone has discernment and insight and can vote according to the principles that's the way to choose good leaders. Right. Right. The church has exposed false leaders and antichrists before. We've all seen this happen, and we've learned since then. We know that false leaders and antichrists can't do practical work. They deceptively spout doctrine to show off, and they delay the life entry of brothers and sisters, which really harms them. That's yes. right. Those false leaders and antichrists were only able to become leaders because we didn't vote based on principles. We relied on our own ideas and imaginations, which harmed everyone in the church. Yeah. But now we've learned our lesson already, so we need to vote well. If we betray these principles and vote based on feelings, we'll resist God and harm his chosen people. You're right. It's important to fellowship clearly on these principles. We need to seek the truth and fellowship clearly. I've been thinking uh, about this election. Both of our church leaders have strong points. Mm -hmm. Sister Zhu has practical fellowship and can resolve problems. Sister Zhao's new and doesn't have as much experience. But she seems good, fellowships the truth well, and is responsible in her duties. I think they're still the best choice. I too have thought about it. They're both good choices, there's no doubt. If there's a better candidate, I don't know who it is. Same. Sister Wu, 
The gathering's done? Mm-hmm. I'll go look. Great. What do you want? Is Ching-Yu home? Hey, who's there? Ching-Yu. Sister Young? Come in. Come quickly. We were in a gathering when the police showed up. If our lookout hadn't sounded the alarm, we all would have been arrested. Thanks to God's protection. Luckily, I found your house. You'll be safe in here. Let me know if you need anything. Mm. Jin Yu. Yeah? The CCP has been going crazy arresting believers. If you protect a fugitive, then you're just asking for trouble. If they find her, you'll both go to jail. Wouldn't that destroy our family? But don't you always say we should do good things for others? The CCP's targets these days aren't criminals. They're believers. We should protect them. It's a good deed, something blessed by God. Dad, Ching Yu is right. The CCP hunts down believers like they're criminals. It's terrible. God commends us when we receive and protect these brothers and sisters. You should support her. So you're saying Sister Yang's gathering got reported? That's right. Thanks. The police are looking for her, so she can't go home yet. But wait, your father-in-law isn't a believer, and you're quite busy. Maybe she shouldn't stay at your place. We should find somewhere else for her. Hmm. Then where do you think she should stay? How about with me? I haven't believed long, and I'm not known. She should be safe here. Sounds like a plan. Hmm. Let's have her attend gatherings here. Hmm. I have gone to a few gatherings with her. She always fellowshipped practically. How about we have her lead some small groups? Sounds good. Today, let's fellowship on our elections. Don't be afraid to ask any questions. I have a question, actually. I know that we should choose leaders who love the truth and possess its reality, because that's the only way to lead us into the truth. But how do we know who has the reality of the truth? I'm not very clear on that right now. For example, some people can work, preach, expend themselves, pay a price in their duties, and support their brothers and sisters. Is that having the reality of the truth? Right. When it comes to this subject, we've fellowshipped a lot. But when something comes up, I don't have much discernment. I see some people have good caliber, and grasp the truth quickly, they fellowship well with good understanding. And I think that they understand the truth and have its reality. Is that the right way to look at it? That's a good question. It is. We need to fellowship on it. God's word is very clear on the subject. Let's read some so we'll understand. Okay. 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 Holding up God's words and being able to explain them unabashedly does not mean you are in possession of reality. 
Things are not as simple as you imagine. Whether you are in possession of reality is not based on what you say, rather it is based on what you live out. Only when God's words become your life and your natural expression can you be said to have reality, and only then can you be counted as having gained true understanding and actual stature. You must be able to withstand examination over long periods of time, and you must be able to live out the likeness that is required by God. This must not be mere posturing, it must flow from you naturally. Only then will you truly possess reality, and only then will you have gained life. The good soldiers of the kingdom are not trained to be a group of people who can only talk about reality or boast. Rather, they are trained to live out God's words at all times, to remain unyielding no matter what setbacks they face, and to live constantly in accordance with God's words, and not to return to the world. This is the reality of which God speaks. This is God's requirement of man. People who truly expend themselves for God lay out their entire being before Him. They genuinely submit to all of His utterances and are able to put His words into practice. They make God's words the foundation of their existence, and they are able to search earnestly within God's words to find out which parts to practice. Such are people who truly live before God. If what you do is beneficial for your life, and through the eating and drinking of His words you can meet your inner needs and inadequacies so that your life disposition is transformed, then this will satisfy God's will. If you act in accordance with God's requirements, and if you do not satisfy the flesh but instead satisfy His will, then in this you will have entered the reality of His words. Amen. God's words make it very clear. A person being eloquent doesn't mean they have the reality of the truth, nor does it matter if they can suffer for their duty. What matters is if they can practice the truth. And if they live by God's words, that's what really matters. That's Amen. right. That's right. Some have good caliber. Their fellowship on God's words is helpful and illuminating for other people. But if they lack experience and practice, and just do what they want when something comes up, anything they say will be empty and also impractical. They won't be able to tell you the essence of the truth because they haven't practiced it. Right. Right. Can a believer who doesn't practice the truth enter into the reality of the truth? No, I don't, I don't think so. Definitely not. Exactly. You can tell someone has the reality of the truth if they practiced it, if their words and deeds are principled, and if they can uphold the truth and protect the church work when things happen, and if they're loyal to God and their duties. Someone like that has the reality of the truth. That makes a lot of sense. Someone who doesn't practice the truth can't enter into its reality. Hmm. When I was just starting out, I didn't understand a lot. I listened to pastors and elders explain the Bible. So all I got was some Bible knowledge. I didn't know about the reality of the truth. All I did was pray to the Lord to take me to the kingdom of heaven. It's pretty pathetic when you think about it. Accepting Almighty God's work of the last days and experiencing the judgment of God's word helped me understand the truth and see that I had been corrupted by Satan, that I was arrogant and even selfish. I would lie and cheat to protect my interests, and I appeared to work hard, but all I really wanted was the kingdom's blessings. Was I acting like a human really should? Then I began to loathe myself deliberately forsaking myself and practicing the truth when things happened. Finally, I had some submission to God. And now, though I've changed a little, I still spout doctrine without much reality. I now realize, without experiencing the judgment in God's words, we can't know our own satanic nature, nor can we ever practice the truth. With that, how can we have the reality of the truth? Could we be worthy of God's kingdom? You're absolutely right. I was mired in religion for most of my life. I never understood the truth. I blindly trusted pastors. I thought, since they knew about the Bible, they had the reality of the truth. Yes. And what came of that? Almighty God expressed so much truth, but they never sought to hear God's voice. They condemned and blasphemed Almighty God and kept us from seeking the true way. They almost had me deceived. These pastors and elders lacked all reality of the truth. 
The whole lot of them are nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. I realize whether you have reality, it's not based on the things you say, but how you live. When things happen, someone who can practice the truth, resolve problems with the truth, and help others understand and obey God's will is someone with the reality of the truth. Yes. When God's work isn't like human notions, or when we face refinement, our behavior is what reveals whether or not we have the reality of the truth. Yeah. Yes. yes. This reminds me, years ago, I was elected as a church leader. I felt it was God exalting me. I was passionate about the job and was willing to suffer. In gatherings, I'd share my own understanding of God's words. I thought I knew the truth and possessed its reality. I thought I was loyal and obedient. I thought a lot of myself. I became arrogant, then stubborn and reckless. I wouldn't listen to anything my brothers and sisters said, so I was removed from my job. After that, I was just crushed. I thought, if I can't be a leader, what else is left? What else is there to look forward to? I was miserable from that point on and didn't want to do my duty. Only then did I come before God and read God's words. God's words say, I am most disgusted by those who only speak of theories without possessing any reality. They shout the loudest when carrying out their work, but as soon as they are faced with reality, they fall apart. Does this not show that these people have no reality? Some people only arm themselves with certain truths for emergencies or to forsake themselves and help others, and not to solve their own troubles. We call them selfless people. They regard others as puppets of the truth and themselves as its masters teaching others to hold fast to the truth and not to be passive, while they themselves remain as spectators on the sidelines. What kind of people are these? They arm themselves with some words of truth, but merely use them to lecture others, while doing nothing at all to keep from meeting their own destruction. How pathetic. If their words can help others, then why can they not help themselves? We should label them as hypocrites, who have no reality. With these words, I reflected on myself. As a church leader, I said the right things to everyone else. In duties, there's no difference in status between people. No matter what our duties are, they're preordained by God. We should obey all God's arrangements and strive to satisfy God. After I was dismissed and lost my status, I was negative and complained. I didn't even want to do my duty anymore. How was that submission or loyalty to God? Then I realized all I'd been doing was reciting doctrine, but I didn't have reality of the truth. Being exposed by God, I understood that understanding gained without any experience can't possibly be practical. It can't fix practical problems and will fall apart in the face of trials. We can't stand firm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Spouting doctrine does nothing but confuse people. You become a hypocritical Pharisee who walks the path of resisting God. This is what happens when you don't strive to experience God's word. Right. And now I truly realize with spiritual knowledge, I still have no reality if I rely on my own thinking. Having the reality of the truth takes the practice and experience of God's word. And it also takes the work of the Holy Spirit and our cooperation. Amen. Thank God. Thanks be to God. This fellowship is so practical. I used to think having the reality of the truth was all about working and preaching. Yeah. Now I finally understand. It has nothing to do with someone's ability to suffer or eloquence, but whether they can practice the truth and obey God, if they're loyal to God, and whether they love God. That's right. Even if they speak well, if they can't practice truth and reality, then what they say is just doctrine. It's all empty. Yes. Today's fellowship was great. Thanks be to God. What a fantastic fellowship. Absolutely. It's edifying. Indeed. Sister Zhao? Yes? Yesterday Xiaoyu didn't come to our gathering. What's wrong? 
Her parents saw on TV that believers were getting arrested. They were afraid so they wouldn't let her believe in God. They're keeping a close eye on her and won't let her come to gatherings. I'll find a way to fellowship with her. Okay. Sister Zhao. Hey, you came. Last night, I went to my aunt's house, and Sister Yang was there. So she has already fellowshiped with you then? Mm-hmm. And now I understand God's will. God uses this type of oppression and trial to perfect my faith and love. These are lessons I need to learn when this kind of thing happens. It's difficult and dangerous to follow the path of faith because our world is such a dark place and the CCP is evil. But if things weren't the way they are, I wouldn't see this clearly. I'm glad you learned that. Sister Yang will run our meeting today. Mm -hmm. Her fellowship is really great and practical. It gives me a path. Her fellowship is great, right? Yeah, I enjoy it a lot as well. Hi, everyone. Have a good day. Hello. Has my order arrived? It has. Come, in the back. Ching Yu, I got a note from our leaders to put Sister Yang on the election ballot. Oh, that's good to hear. Compared to Sister Young, I lack so much. I need to try harder. Through implementing election principles, we've found that most people only understand theories. Before each election, we fellowshiped on the principles of choosing leaders. But some people still lack discernment. They vote for people who seemed gifted and eloquent, but can't uphold principles or practice the truth. There are some who get elected but just spout doctrine, who can't do any practical work at all. And those who are honest and fellowship on the truth to fix problems are made outcasts. Are elections like that principled? No. Hmm. Due to this, these past few days, we've talked about some experiences of failure based on God's words. This has helped our fellowship. Now we can discern people and understand some election principles. We can pick good leaders who do things in a principled way. This way we can really enter into the truth. Yes, right. Hey, sister, you've been with us for a while. What problems have you discovered within our church? Yes, yes tell please. Us. The past few days at gatherings, I found that many people don't really understand themselves very much. They see that what God's words reveal are fact, but that isn't true self-knowledge. What they really need to know 
is their own corrupt essence and situation, and they should bring themselves in line with God's words and be convinced. When they see they've been corrupted by Satan, full of its dispositions, they'll come to loathe themselves. This happens when we know ourselves. When I heard some brothers and sisters talk about knowing themselves, they know that they have corrupt dispositions, but their understanding is vague. They're lost in the details of how they expose these satanic dispositions, what natures control them, and where the root of it all lies. Think of this. When someone talks of self-knowledge, they only say they're arrogant or corrupt and such, or that they act self-important. But they can't explain how they're arrogant or corrupt, or why they act that way, or how they manifest it, or what the root of it is. Just like when partners in a duty have differing opinions, they'll cling to their own opinions, but they don't know their motives. They don't understand what thoughts are controlling them, nor do they understand the consequences of not resolving their arrogant dispositions. They'll just admit they have corrupt dispositions, but don't have any real knowledge or loathing of their corrupt natures. Then, they won't ever achieve genuine repentance. So when the time is right, their problems will all come back, and they won't be able to escape this bondage. It's why some brothers and sisters see such slow growth in their own lives. That's mm. right. Yeah, you're so right. Yeah. Sister Young, you are absolutely right. My own self-knowledge is shallow. As a leader, I speak of doctrine and can't resolve practical problems. So everyone rattles off doctrine just like I do, all while thinking they understand. It shows that I'm not cut out to be a leader. In many ways, I rely on my own notions and I don't seek the truth or try to resolve problems based on God's word. Thinking on it, I really don't have the truth. You could say I don't understand it, which explains why my self-knowledge is vague. I can't even see how much Satan has corrupted me or whether I have humanity, which is why I can't loathe myself. That's the root of it all. Yeah. Now I see that without true self-knowledge, we can't gain life entry. Even if we're leaders, we use our gifts and rely on doctrine for our work. Doesn't this harm God's chosen? Mm -hmm. From now on, I'll focus on my own life entry and work hard to know myself and resolve my own problems before trying to fix others' problems. That's right. You're so right. There's no life entry without self-knowledge. I have the same problem. Often I'll expose corrupt dispositions, but won't discuss them openly. When I make mistakes, I won't admit to them. Doesn't that make me a hypocrite? Sister Yang's fellowship is practical. As a watering deacon, I only ever focused on working hard. I thought I had the reality of the truth. Looking at it now, I'm also a hypocrite. I rarely talk about all the mistakes I make or about my corrupt dispositions. I just say empty words about my knowledge. I can't give fellowship on the principles of practicing the truth, and I avoid the problems raised by my brothers and sisters. Truth is, I haven't really done practical work. Sometimes I'll feel guilty about it, but I'll console myself. Like I haven't done anything evil, at least. I deserve credit for my hard work. That's how I justify it to myself. After all this time, I still don't have much experience of practicing God's words. I don't pursue the truth at all. I think I need to put more effort into knowing myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or I'll be on the wrong path, not just harming myself, but blocking other people's life entry. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. right. Right, same here. I need to reflect on myself as well. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Right. You're all speaking very practically. We all have a problem with self-knowledge. As a church leader, I'm responsible. It's me who doesn't have the reality of the truth. I haven't led you to the right path. I'm indebted to God. I need to repent.
Hey. Is something bothering you? We should talk about it. No, I'm fine. It's getting late. I need to pick up my kid. Goodbye. Oh no, the soup. And the cakes are burning. These are gonna be overdone. All right. We can always make more. Not a big deal. What's going on? You okay? Of course I'm fine. I can finish this. No, leave me alone. Sister, do you have any problems in your duties? Mm, no. Sister Zhao, huh? on her way to the gathering, Sister Wang was followed. It might have been a CCP agent. She said it was hard to lose him. Ah, uh, so it's not safe for Sister Yang to stay there. We should move her somewhere else. Ah, uh, we moved her to Sister Zhang's house. That's good. Let's talk a while. So, is Sister Yang being watched? When I asked, she didn't think so. If she stays at Sister Wang's, going out for gatherings, it'll be hard to tell if she's under surveillance. If she's being watched, going out to gatherings could be a risk to the church. I think we should ask her to go into hiding and suspend her duties for now. Do you agree? If nobody's watching her, all she needs is a new place to live. Would suspending her gatherings be all right? If she hides, she'll be keeping the church safe, and herself as well. If nobody's watching her, all she needs is a new place to live. Would suspending her gatherings be all right? Do you think Sister Yang will be safe if she stays at home? Is this really the best way? Xing Yu, I'd like to talk to you about some things that I've noticed. Hmm, go ahead. Since Sister Yang has been up for church leader, it seems that you've been excluding her. And last time, when she pointed out the deficiencies in church life, Everyone admitted and accepted them, except you, who seemed hesitant. And now you're keeping her from gatherings and duties, claiming that it's for her safety? Do you think there's personal motives behind doing this? Have you reflected on that? If you're excluding her to protect your own reputation and status, that's a serious problem. As believers, we need to fear God, especially as leaders. If we pursue name and status instead of seeking the truth, that's the path of resisting God and will offend God's disposition. When Sister Yang participates in church life, she talks about the reality of the truth and fixes practical problems for people. It's helpful for our life entry. Why don't you treasure that? 
if you're just finding excuses to isolate her. How will you square that with your conscience? How will you explain it to God? As church leaders, you should know how to discover and cultivate talent and not be jealous of talented people. In this way, your duty will be performed satisfactorily and you will have fulfilled your responsibility. You will also have done your utmost to be devoted. Some people are always afraid that others will steal their limelight and surpass them, obtaining recognition while they themselves are neglected. This leads them to attack and exclude others. Is this not a case of being jealous of people more capable than themselves? Is such behavior not selfish and contemptible? What kind of disposition is this? It is malicious. Thinking only of oneself, satisfying only one's own desires, showing no consideration for the duties of others, and thinking only about one's own interests and not the interests of God's house. People like this have a bad disposition, and God has no love for them. Every one of you has risen to the pinnacle of the multitudes. You have ascended to be the ancestors of the masses. You are extremely arbitrary, and you run amok among all of the maggots, seeking a place of ease. You do not know your place, yet still you battle with each other in the dung. What can you gain from such struggle? If you truly had reverence for me in your hearts, how could you fight with each other behind my back? No matter how high your status, are you still not a sinking little worm in the dung? Will you be able to sprout wings and become a dove in the sky? Her fellowship is really great and practical. It gives me a path. Thanks be to God, this fellowship is so practical. Yeah, I enjoy it a lot as well. I think we should ask her to go into hiding and suspend her duties for now. Do you agree? Aren't I just contending with Sister Yang for status? When I saw how practical her fellowship on the truth was, and how everyone approved of her, I got jealous and excluded her. Relying on my own notions to suspend her from her duties. How could I do something so terrible? God, I really do lack all humanity. <laughs> Sister? I came here to apologize. When I saw how everyone enjoys your fellowship so much and comes to you with questions, I was jealous. I worried that everyone would vote for you instead of me. So I got competitive. And then I... I arranged for you to hide, suspending your duties. I really have no humanity. 
You were pursued by the police. You went through so much to escape. But instead of consoling you, I just acted badly. I'm sorry. Hearing this makes me feel ashamed. I saw that you were competitive, and I really wanted to fellowship with you. But I had concerns. I thought that you couldn't help but reveal that corruption. So I didn't try to help. I didn't act out of love. So I'm sorry as well. Don't say that. My desire for status was strong. Your fellowship is practical, and you can resolve others' problems. It's so helpful to us all. It's really great. Not like me. I tried to oust you so I could stay as leader. Why would I do such a bad thing? I haven't been doing my duty. I've been doing evil. Why do I always pursue name and status? Why can't I change my disposition? There's an old saying I know. Diseases come by horse, but go away on foot. Satanic natures are rooted deeply in all people. And we can't change without judgment and chastisement. My own desire for name and status is strong too. It's taken pruning and trials and refinement over a long time for me to change it all. Pursuing status is a way to try and control others, make them worship and follow you. But aren't humans all the same way? That's how satanic dispositions control people. God expressed so many words to save us, to try and escape this. We need to experience the judgment in God's words before we can change these dispositions. Thanks be to God. After talking about it, I feel a lot better now. The excessive desire for status is a satanic disposition, and we should learn all we can. Yeah. How should we experience God's judgment so we can be purified? Why don't we fellowship on this question at tomorrow's gathering? Great. During the process of man's learning of knowledge, Satan employs all manner of methods, whether it be telling stories, simply giving them some individual piece of knowledge, or allowing them to satisfy their desires or ambitions. What road does Satan want to lead you down? In fact, no matter how lofty man's ideals are, no matter how realistic man's desires or how proper they may be, all that man wants to achieve, all that man seeks for, is inextricably linked to two words. These two words are vitally important to the life of every person. And they are things Satan intends to instill in man. What are these two words? They are fame and gain. Satan uses fame and gain to control man's thoughts until all people can think of is fame and gain. For fame and gain, they struggle, suffer hardships, and endure humiliation. They sacrifice everything 
and can decide anything for the sake of fame and gain. In this way, Satan binds people with invisible shackles, and they have neither the strength nor the courage to throw them off. They unknowingly bear these shackles and trudge ever onward with great difficulty. For the sake of this fame and gain, mankind shuns God and betrays Him and becomes increasingly wicked. In this way, therefore, one generation after another is destroyed in the midst of Satan's fame and gain. In your seeking, you have too many individual notions, hopes, and futures. The current work is in order to deal with your desire for status and your extravagant desires. Hopes, status, and notions are all classic representations of satanic disposition. The reason that these things exist in people's hearts is entirely because Satan's poison is always corroding people's thoughts, and always people are unable to shake off these temptations of Satan. They are living in the midst of sin, yet do not believe it to be sin. For many years, the thoughts that people have relied upon for their survival have been corroding their hearts, to the point that they have become treacherous, cowardly, and despicable. Not only do they lack willpower and resolve, but they have also become greedy, arrogant, and willful. They are utterly lacking any resolve that transcends the self. And even more, they don't have a bit of courage to shake off the strictures of these dark influences. People's thoughts and lives are so rotten that their perspectives on believing in God are still unbearably hideous. And even when people speak of their perspectives on belief in God, it is simply unbearable to hear. People are all cowardly, incompetent, despicable, and fragile. They do not feel disgust for the forces of darkness, and they do not feel love for the light and the truth. Instead, they do their utmost to expel them. Thank God. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. God's words are very practical. In the past, we couldn't see clearly what name and status really are. We thought it was a positive thing, a worthwhile life goal to have. Right. right. Since childhood, our teachers have fed us materialism and atheism and ideas from famous people, such as every man for himself, those with brains rule over those with brawn, and the highest people are scholars. Don't forget, bring honor to your ancestors. A man's legacy is his life's echo. Mm. Mm. Right. Also, man should try to be better than his peers. In the past, we took these phrases as things to live by. We worshiped obtaining status and power and tried to rise above other people. For what? We became more arrogant and despicable. We want to gain power, stand over others, and control them. True. We just keep struggling for power. We want to control and to lord over others like tyrants. Isn't that the result of Satan's corruption of humanity? Yes, yes. it's true. You're absolutely right. People today pursue fame and status and worship power. Nobody wants to pursue the truth at all. Take the CCP, for example. Why do they burn crosses, destroy churches, and persecute Christians? Why must all churches show the flag and G's portrait? They want to ban belief in God and have us all worship Satan. Right. right. The fact that the CCP has done such evil with their power proves that if anyone who worships power takes charge, they'll resist God, and their actions will harm humanity. So then... If we don't accept God's judgment and chastisement, then sadly, we can't be purified. So many believers pursue name and status instead of seeking the truth, and so they become false leaders and antichrists. Those who pursue status, those people hate the truth, and they resist God. They'll be eliminated by God's work, and they won't receive God's salvation. That's true. If we don't fix such corrupt dispositions, we don't deserve to be leaders or to serve God. Yes. That's very true. 
Fame and status are both terrifying things. Since believing in God, I focused on working for God and becoming a leader. I thought if I did my work well and earned the support of my brothers and sisters, I'd earn God's approval, be saved, and enter the kingdom of heaven. Thinking back now, how could I have been so foolish and so ignorant? I had no idea what God's will was. Just as the Lord Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Amen. Amen. And now I think I understand his words. Those few words are a reminder and a warning for us. Those who pursue fame and gain, this is God's love. That's right. Yes, it is. That's right. For believers in God, the most important thing is to pursue the truth honestly, to accept God's judgment and have our corrupt disposition cleansed. That's right. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Thanks Dispositional God. change to God. is crucial in our that pursuit of the truth. Exactly. Hey, Sister Young, how did you experience God's judgment when you pursued name and status? Can you fellowship on that? Please yes. do. Yes. I'll tell you about my experience. Years ago, I became a church leader. And I was zealous at work because I had status. If my brothers and sisters had any issues, I found words of God for support and fellowship. Then pretty soon, my work produced results, and I had some approval. So I thought I was good at my job and a real leader. I thought I had to work harder so that maybe I'd be recommended for a promotion. I focused only on working, and to get more attention, I'd sometimes show off. Before long, I felt a darkness inside. I wasn't enlightened by God's words, and my fellowship gave no light. It was just doctrine. I couldn't resolve any of the problems the others had. No matter how hard I tried, I didn't know what to say. That's when I knew I had lost the work of the Holy Spirit. After that, I was dismissed. Then I was in a really dark spot, feeling I couldn't show my face. I really was miserable. I reflected on myself and read this in God's Word. Some people particularly idolize Paul. They like to go out and give speeches and do work. They like to meet together and speak. They like people listening to them, worshiping them, and surrounding them. They like to have status in the minds of others, and they appreciate it when others value their images. Let us analyze their nature from these behaviors. What is their nature? If they really behave like this, then it is enough to show that they are arrogant and conceited. They do not worship God at all. They seek a higher status and wish to have authority over others to possess them and to have status in their minds. This is a classic image of Satan. The aspects of their nature that stand out are arrogance and conceit, an unwillingness to worship God and a desire to be worshipped by others. Such behaviors can give you a very clear view into their nature. Amen. 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 God's words seemed to pierce my heart. With these words, I was exposed. I'd always loved to work. I'd love to have others surround me and worship me. When others listened to me, I'd feel happy beyond words. I didn't want to just be a church leader. I'd wanted a promotion so I could control more people. How was I any different from Satan? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Satan is arrogant and wants to rise up to be on equal footing with God. So I was just as arrogant. I had no fear of God in my heart. I worked for God as a chance to show off so that others would look up to and obey me. 
That made me just like Satan, someone who contends with God for status and people. God is the creator, mighty and noble, yet he incarnated as a regular person, humble and hidden among men. He endures great humiliation to work and save mankind. Yes. People are arrogant, rebellious, and unreasonable, yet he doesn't abandon them. Smaller than a speck of dust, corrupt and filthy, I was obsessed with standing over others. I really was arrogant and despicable. I had no humility or reason. The more I thought, the more ashamed I felt. I excessively sought name and status, and I worked purely to gain these things. I was engaged in my own business, which was just resisting God. That's when I began to repent and loathe myself. So I prayed to God, asking him to punish me if I ever pursued name and status again. From then on, I focused on pursuing the truth. And whenever I thought about status, I prayed to God and forsook myself. I also made a point to expose myself and asked others to monitor me. Without knowing it, I began to feel a change. I didn't care so much about name and status. My attitude at work was more pure, and I was much more at ease. No matter what duties God's house gave me, I accepted it as God's commission and did my very best. My only desire is that I can satisfy God. Amen. Amen. Then I finally felt calm and at peace. That's Amen. great. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks to God. Thanks to God. The effect of God's work. Your fellowship is really helpful to us. Before, I only admitted that I had an arrogant nature and sought status, but I didn't understand the essence of my pursuit of status. I made allowances for myself in these things. I thought it didn't impact my duties, that I didn't do evil, so I would work on it someday. Now I clearly see my satanic nature of pursuing name and status is so harmful. Right. Yes. And that, without seeking the truth, I might do something to resist God or offend His disposition. Even if I want to control it, I can't. It's so important for believers to pursue the truth and accept God's judgment. That's true. Mm -hmm. From now on, I'll focus on God's word, reflect on myself, and I'll obey God's chastisement and His judgment. Or else, I will never be purified of my satanic dispositions at all. That's, That's right, right, of course. course. Thanks be to God. As a creature of God, man should seek to perform the duty of a creature of God and seek to love God without making other choices. For God is worthy of man's love. Those who seek to love God should not seek any personal benefits or seek that which they personally long for. This is the most correct means of pursuit. If what you seek is the truth, if what you put into practice is the truth, and if what you attain is a change in your disposition, then the path that you tread is the right one. When people experience until the day, their outlook on life and the meaning, the basis of their existence have entirely changed. When they have been altered to their very bones and have become someone else, is this not incredible? This is a great change, an earth-shattering change. Only when you become disinterested in the fame and fortune, status, money, pleasure, power, and glory of the world, and can easily forego them. Will you have the likeness of a human being? Those who will ultimately be made complete are a group such as this. They live for the truth, live for God, and live for that which is just. 
This is the likeness of a true human being. Everyone, it's time to start the vote. Okay. 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 